Hey, what's up, fellas? We're back out here at White Sands testing the high emissivity ceramic paint. This paint performed so phenomenal in the first phase of testing. We're now moving on to the second stage. This is what we've seen thus far. This stuff is so amazing, it can withstand an endurance test like what you're looking at right now. So, today, we're going to paint a furnace with this stuff. But first, we're going to run the furnace without the paint to see what the high temperatures we can reach with waste oil are without the high emissivity paint. That would leave us at about 0.4 to 0.6 for the alumina refractory. So, to show you what I mean about this paint and the power that it has, this coupon right here, this test coupon that's been painted with this stuff right here is going to be heated to the same temperature. Um, and look at the difference. You see how one portion of it appears to glow brighter than the other? It's because this paint has such a high emissivity that even though those bodies are all the same temp, it emits more IR infrared heat. This stuff is basically just like any other paint. Without the proper surface preparation, it's not going to adhere. Even the ceramic paint that you can buy at the store underperforms under even moderate cleaning conditions. I've spray painted these burners with that paint several times and have just been terribly disappointed in its performance. So hopefully this stuff's a little better. What we see here is some ceramic paint that I used years ago. And you can see this burner pretty much removed all that. You can see it's falling off. The surface prep may not have been ideal. That could be part of it. All right, fellas. We got a bunch of coupon samplings going here. Looks like uh, jar number three is winning the show. This thing's been heated up to red hot heat twice. Showing no signs of spalling. It's a very robust paint. But surface preparation is everything. See here, this jar one sample appears to be a botched mixture. Same here, jar one. The mixture appears to be a botched formula. The sample right here is the same as these here that appear to be falling apart. And it is in fact a superior blend, but the surface prep must be up to par. This has been heated to red hot temps also. This one here did best of all, and I was really worried about it, some of its preliminary testing. You can see it made some very bad blotch tests. This one right here was good, which was promising, which led me, you know, to keep at I don't like the atomization in this gun. Wondering if I should turn up the air a little bit. This stuff paints very well. I used a harbor, a small Harbor Freight airbrush to paint this thing. So it has a little bit of imperfection because it was clogging up on me. You can see right there where I sprayed and it kind of splashed a bit. What? All right, so the lighting is killing me here. <clears throat> I'm not able to get an actual representation. This is a very flat paint and yet I'm getting a high gloss shine Look at that. Can you guys see how flat that is? <clears throat> That's like flatter than, I don't know what, flatter than glass. So it's a very mate, but yet it's shining in the light, strangely. Um, so sorry to beat this dog to death. I just wanted you to get a look at the true coating. They were not painted by a professional airbrush painter. It's the first time I've ever used one of those. So there's some overspray there where I'm getting used to the gun and setting the pressure as you go. I used this little thing here to paint most of this stuff and I didn't filter it. You need to filter the paint. You can't just dump paint into these things. This one here did a little better, but I haven't quite yet learned how to use them. I didn't even know what pressure to set them on. 
or anything like that. So that's why I just don't want to give the paint a bad name by showing you my paint job. That gave us an open pit tip. So this is what we got. We're washed. We're ready to go. We've also got these burners ready. And uh, this is where we're at. This paint worked out really well. The sprayer wasn't putting it on evenly. My sprayer kept clogging up, so any patchiness you see, attribute that to my poor painting skills with Harbor Freight spray guns. It would spray for a second and then clog up. Okay, fellas, so I've got some steel in here. This is not cast iron. Just want to prove that we know we can melt cast iron with this furnace. We've never been able to melt steel before. We're going to be setting that crucible on this coupon. This is a test coupon that was used to test the paint that we made. And I like to set my crucible on a piece of stainless steel so that the crucible doesn't stick to the foundry floor. With any luck, this will go very well. And we're going to see temperatures above the 2,650 degrees. That's all we got to do is get above 2,650. On waste oil, that's phenomenal. Typically, waste oil will only get you to the 2200 degree range, so. All right, guys, I noticed something really cool while I was checking the oil preheater on this burner. You can see the preheater takes it up to about 300 some degrees Fahrenheit there. It's a gentle preheat on that oil, and it also preheats the air. But look at the absence of red hot metal inside the combustion chamber. That whole thing should be glowing red hot. I've run plenty of these burners to know. So it is keeping a lot of that heat in the burner. Look at this old footage from an uncoated burner and you can see it has that whole engine bay lit up like a Christmas tree. So already I'm seeing some improvements. Crucible melted. Never done that before. Oh, shit, the whole floor is melted. I'm pulling the crucible. All right, that. That speaks for itself right there, guys. You better believe we saw an improvement in performance. Check that out. That must be the molten blob. So we had a complete, utter thermal meltdown, but I can still see the lining is intact. The heat coating is still present. We've completely vitrified. We got a molten pool of material down there. I need to shut the forge before too much damage happens. There's a couple little beads of metal in there too. So, uh, pretty crazy. I have never been able to melt this forge down like that. Only with the rocket burner. So I don't know what we're going to attribute that to.
There's got to be some explanation for it, right? It's it's never happened again I w before. I wouldn't lie to you. Ain't never done that with the, these fire clay crucibles are just beast. Their operating temp is 2,700 degrees. Guys, this is so cool. I'm starting to be able to see the zirconium oxide coating peek through the intense radiation blasting off of this thing. It did indeed survive the excursion. We'll take a look after it's cooled down. I am, I have completely melted the throat of my furnace out. I can't believe how deep that puddle of material is.